name is Bill Baboon. Uh, I'll be giving the presentation tonight. Um, uh, there's the computer. Uh, so, and I will be uh, uh, assistant isn't really the right word, but like co-presenting <laughs> uh, with Joshi Orndorff of uh, of uh, Parity Technologies. Uh, so this is, as as you can tell, there's a, there is a bit of a setup involved uh, in here, but it's the richest uh, process tonight. Um, but a few things. One, uh, if you are stuck, uh, you know, just uh, raise your hand. So I'll be giving a little bit of a presentation at first. Um, if you raise your hand, uh, Josh will be going around and, and helping people out. So don't feel like you're interrupting. Like that's what we, you know, that's how we set this up. That you know, uh, he can he can still help you and get things working while uh, I'm giving sort of the, the, the presentation. Um, the other thing is that you know, even if we uh, hopefully we can get it to work on everybody's computer. If not, I think you will still get a lot out of the presentation uh, and uh, maybe gain a little bit of appreciation for what the vision of, of Polkadot is, building your own blockchain, why you want to do that. Let me show you the computer uh, works. We got like a little rave here uh, with the graphics. <laughs> they call them. Make sure the computer has power. Uh, um, because sometimes HDMI is not powerful. Yeah. 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 Uh, there should be. You can move the, take out the ball. Oh, Um, it's just it's an adapter problem. Um, some USB C adapters and some apples. Yeah, if you've got if you got a spare one. If you've got the official app one, it almost always works better than the yeah, knockoffs. USB-C to this one. <laughs> Who runs this place? Hey. hey! Oh, beautiful. All right, yeah. Howard. Yes. All right. Okay. Oh, the stream's already yeah. going, by the way. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, if you want to, yeah. I'll, I'll get the slides. i got to find the slides here anyway. I know, it's really good. We're getting rid of it, actually, in the near future. I think it's very cool. Yeah. No, it's actually, there is a static version as well. Well, I want us to present. Yeah, well, this will work. I swear I had this presenting correctly before. Yep. All right, folks. Thank you and welcome for coming. I think there's some folks out there if you're uh, coming in for the meetup. Now's a great time to come grab a seat. Um, hi, I'm Colin. I'm one of the code and supply folks. Um, you are in 
um, a co-working space owned by us, Open Spot. Um, as such, you are also in some people's office space. So um, just need to be respectful of the, the desks that you see around in various rooms so that people's private property. Um, restrooms are all the way in the back. You have not um, seen the signs. All the way back, you can't miss them. You'll eventually see more restrooms. Uh, if you direct your attention to the whiteboard up here, you'll see some of the events that are going on in the co-working space over the course of the month. Um, notably this week, we've got uh, a code for Pittsburgh Hatch Day coming up on, uh, on Wednesday. Um, other things. We're putting on a conference. How many of you have heard of abstractions? Cool, cool. Those of you who haven't, abstractions is a cool thing. It's a conference that we're putting on for all software professionals over all walks of life, all skill levels, development, design, management, product, Everything you can think of. It's going to be something for everybody. Um, we have announced our in, almost our entire speaker lineup. We still have a few speakers that we're, we're holding on to um, as we get them confirmed and get them signed up, um, including one person that probably at least 90% of you have watched on YouTube. And we're very, very happy to uh, have that one come in to uh, give one of our keynotes. Um, other things. That's it. How many of you? How many of you? Is it your first time at coding at uh, coding supply? Cool, lots of new people. Great. All right. Thank you very much for thank you very much for coming. Um, how did you hear about us? You're about yeah. to meet us. <laughs> meet up. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. I was literally blocked the entire day. Awesome. We need <laughs> these blocks in, in descriptions more often. Then. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Um, so without uh, further ado and blabbering from myself, we'll introduce Bill Lazoon, who is a longtime friend of mine, um, and um, now actually going off and doing things in the blockchain world. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, Colin actually is the person who first introduced me to blockchain, I think, t I don't know, 2013 or so, a uh, long time ago. Uh, and yeah, and now, and now here I am. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so my name is Bill Laboon. Uh, I, I see a few of you know me uh, from uh, teaching at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm currently on leave of absence there working for the Web3 Foundation. Um, uh, along uh, with me here uh, it, uh, is Joshi Orndorff, uh, who is visiting us from Cleveland uh, uh, for the evening. He is with Parity Technologies, who are the developers of Substrate. Uh, so as I already mentioned, but some people may not have heard, you know, if you if you were having an issue uh, while I'm giving the talk, and this talk, you know, this is a workshop, it is not really a talk. So I have a, you know, it's a relatively brief presentation, but if you're uh, uh, stuck uh, during this, please just raise your hand. Uh, Josh, you can come around and, and help you. Uh, or if, you know, if there's so someone else, if you feel like helping out others that you see their hands raised and you think you can help them, please feel free to, uh, to help. We're all... Uh, you know, it's, it's a very helpful uh, environment uh, uh, this evening. All right, so um, before we begin, uh, make sure that you, uh, this is where we're going to want to be uh, by, by the time we actually start the workshop. Uh, I have listed all the commands in easy uh, copy and pasteable form in a few locations. So if you RSVP'd for the meetup, you should have gotten an email uh, with these. If you, uh, you can also go to this link bit.ly 2HYNG uh, uh, as in golf, Z as in Zulu, H as in hotel. Um, and you can just, you should be able to just copy and paste all of the commands if you uh, are still uh, working through it. So I'll give everyone a moment just, uh, if you haven't copied down this address, it should have all of the different commands that you need uh, to get up and running. Good. Anyone still writing it down? Okay. Excellent. All right. So, what is the Web3 Foundation? Uh, the Web3 Foundation has a goal of bringing uh, Web3 to life. All right. So, <laughs> that seems a very like nice and tautological definition, right? Uh, Web3 Foundation is is helping to found Web3. So, the idea uh, behind Web3 is to build a more decentralized web, specifically using blockchain and decentralized technology. And there is a particular 
uh, paradigm, a particular uh, method that we're uh, hoping to do this via, uh, which is called uh, Polkadot. Uh, so Polkadot is, in one sentence, a heterogeneous multi-chain technology. Uh, what this means in a little bit uh, a less formal uh, language is we see that there are a lot of different blockchains out there. And I'll explain if, you've, if you're not familiar with the blockchain at all, you've probably heard of the technologies that uh, people uh, use blockchain for. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero, Hyperledger. There are a lot of different blockchains out there. And what uh, Gav Wood and some of the other people who uh, founded uh, the Web3 Foundation saw was that there is no perfect blockchain. There is, you know, and there, and then, you know, I, I feel like, you know, there are going to be some maximalists in the art, in the, in the audience who are going to argue with me that whatever this particular blockchain is the best. Um, but I can say that there are always going to be trade-offs, right? Uh, so, for example, um, there are some networks that have extreme, like they, they are very, very fast. They provide a lot of uh, throughput. Others have very um, uh, uh, useful scripting languages. Some are very, very secure, or backed by a lot of hash rate. Uh, some use very different hashing technologies. Some use different consensus algorithms. Some use different finality algorithms. Some don't have true finality. Uh, and a lot of these ideas, they're, they're somewhat, it might be very, very important to some people. So for example, uh, Bitcoin has something called probabilistic finality. And what this means is that it's not that there is ever a 100% accurate source of truth in Bitcoin. It's just that it is astronomically unlikely that a new chain will come along that would be the correct one as opposed to the one that people are looking at. Uh, and I was giving a, a talk to uh, the accounting people at Pitt and they, this just kind of shocked them. Like how, you know, how could you have something that is technically never final? Like this, this, is, this is like, you know, it scared them. And so there, you know, there are other networks that you know, do have finality. We can say that after a certain point, this, this will never change, but there are drawbacks to that as well. And so perhaps uh, these accountants would not be very uh, interested in using Bitcoin, but they would be interested in using something um, uh, that, that actually has finality, like a, di a different blockchain perhaps, or there are some blockchains that anyone can join, right? I can spin up a Bitcoin node right now and connect to the Bitcoin network. But if I am running some you know, very, a very private like supply chain management system or my, my, account, my own like internal accounting software, I may, I may want to have a blockchain and a lot of the benefits of that, but not let anybody come and access it. Uh, so all of these are trade-offs. N none of them are the right way. You know, there, there is no, you know, uh, I mean, I, I've, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I haven't read all the way through the Bible and the Quran and the Torah and all of those, but I'm pretty sure nowhere in there to say, all right, this is the one blockchain. Right. So the idea behind Polkadot is if we have all of these different blockchains, uh, why don't we let people decide what they want to use? What is the best for their needs, but still allow uh, all of these different blockchains to inter interact? All right, so I keep mentioning blockchain. If you're not familiar with what a blockchain looks like, it's actually a relatively simple data structure. Uh, so we have, uh, if, if you if, or have ever seen any sort of uh, you know, like a, a data structure diagram, you'll see this kind of looks like a linked list. Uh, if you're not familiar with linked lists, don't worry. Uh, in each block, uh, we have multiple blocks that are in a chain, thus the name. Uh, and each block is actually going to point to the previous block using something called a hash pointer. And what this means is that if I try to modify something previous to this block, it's actually going to influence my current block uh, and I'll be able to tell that there has been a change. So it's a relative, like this, uh, this is a, you know, a rel relatively simple concept that we have, uh, but again, there's all sorts of different parameters on how exactly uh, we put this, to, uh, put this together. And historically, most uh, blockchains have interact, uh, have, had a, you know, very, have been very siloed. And there are different ways for them to interact with each other. Uh, so there are things like atomic swaps, but they're slow, they're not really native, they're, they're kind of hacks. Uh, the idea of, uh, of Polkadot is that 
we will be able to interact almost as easily with other chains. If I have like a script, a smart contract running on Ethereum, for instance, uh, so you know, this is some chain that already exists, it's out there and running, uh, and I wanna have my own, let's say like a weather forecasting chain or something like that, weather storage data, I should be able to interact with that. And that chain should be inter able to interact with others. So how this is done is we have what are called parachains and a relay chain. The job of the relay chain is really just to uh, make sure that the parachains are behaving and providing a way for them to interact with each other. And you say, well, Bill, how are they going to interact with each other? Didn't you just say that all these blockchains are very different? They have different times between when the blocks are generated. They use different hash functions. Uh, they use different finality uh, and consensus algorithms. But it turns out, if we look at this from a very, very abstract perspective, every time a new block forms on a blockchain, what we are doing is simply making a state transition. We have modified what the state of the universe is. And we, so if, for example, uh, if I have, uh, Alice has 50 tokens leading into this block, and she sends Bob 20 tokens, she signs everything cryptographically, everything is fine, that's a, I can say, all right, that's valid. Uh, or I can say Alice has two tokens, she tries to send Bob 20, everything's valid, you know, the signatures are all valid, but we can tell this does not meet, uh, you know, the, the, uh, this is not a good state transition, right? If I have two tokens, I can't send you 20. So what we can do is put all of this, right, and just define a state transition and say, all right, so Ethereum, this is the state transition function it uses, and Bitcoin uses this function, and, and whatever chain uses this whatever function. And we put this into a WebAssembly blob. We define it in WebAssembly uh, and uh, call this a Polkadot runtime, right? So we put it in the relay chain, all right, any, uh, 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 Remember, which is uh, just making sure that all of the parallel chains, the parachains, are following their own uh, processes. Uh, and we can verify and actually use this to communicate because we have one relay chain that understands how all of these different uh, parachains make their state transitions. You know, how do they modify the state that they're storing? Okay. So uh, how this is done, we've got what are called collators and validators. It's slightly more complex than this, um, but this basic idea, if I've got a couple of different blockchains here, uh, indicated by these different colors, um, and I have some uh, nodes that are like double checking, like yes, uh, this, this is how this, uh, this is work, uh, this parachain is working correctly, it is following the valid state transitions, and on the validator side, on the relay chain, also verifying that like yes, this function is, the state transition function is working correctly, these, no, no one's trying to, to send any bad data. We can verify that all this is valid um, and interact with each other. Okay. All right, so this basic idea, again, you know, it, it is a little bit, you know, the, the, the details of this, uh, I don't, I'm happy, happy to talk more about it one-on-one uh, -on, -one on the interactions, and I actually plan on having another um, a workshop on setting these up, like you know, different collators and validators uh, for different networks. Hopefully that'll bring more people to the meetup because it'll have blockchain in the title, which apparently is a very search engine friendly term, which is great. Uh, uh, so, so I wanna have another workshop on like, all right, how exactly these work and setting them up. But this basic idea of we have a, you know, a, a blockchain is simply a set of, of, val of valid state transitions and we can have a relay chain where they all can interact with each other and verify that they're doing uh, what they're supposed to, and that way we can communicate between them. Does, does that does that make sense from from a very high level? All right. Yeah. Yes. So there is, uh, and in fact, uh, another uh, workshop that I want to run, defining a runtime. Uh, so this runtime is just basically another way to define what those valid state transition functions are. And you will actually be able to do that. And actually, there are companies out there doing that now, uh, making bridges to different existing chains. Basically, translating the logic and the code of, like, for example, the Ethereum virtual machine 
uh, into a WebAssembly blob that we can then validate that the state transition uh, is valid, or straight state transitions are valid. Okay, so you say Polkadot, you know, I, I didn't see anything on the meetup about Polkadot. You said substrate. Uh, so what is substrate? Well, uh, it is an open source modular extensible framework for building blockchains. I tried to you know, you know, boil this down into one sentence, and I have a link there if anyone would like to look uh, more closely, um, produced by uh, Parity Technologies. So I like to think, when I first started uh, looking at Substrate, I thought, ah, this is Ruby on Rails for blockchains. Uh, so if anyone here has done Ruby on Rails, you know, uh, if you type in, you know, and maybe things have changed. I haven't been a Rails dev for a few years. Uh, but you, you do Rails new, and you have a very basic but functioning web application. Like, it doesn't do much, but it handles all of the, the networking for you. And all right, here's you know, where the config files go. Uh, you know, uh, starts listening on the port. It's got uh, you know, a rack, you know, listening for uh, connections, et cetera. It handles a lot of the... The, the deep stuff that you know, most of us don't have to worry about and don't want to worry about when we're making a web application. And it's very, Substrate is very similar. It's this framework for generating your own blockchains if you don't want to have to think about, you know, oh, right, uh, how exactly does a TCP handshake work again? Like, I mean, that's very valuable if you're you know, interviewing at Google and you have to remember your, uh, you know, remember your, your, your details of, of that, or like how different consensus algorithms work. You know, I don't want to worry about that. I just want to have something that I can connect with my peers and start generating blocks and doing what I want to do, developing an application. So we're actually going to create you know, a relatively simple blockchain tonight with some very simple rules. Uh, basically, always trust Bill. Uh, but good, good rules to live by for life, by the way. Um, uh, and we're barely going to look at code. We're going we're gonna to build, but really, we're just going to modify some config files. Uh, but if you want to, you can uh, swap uh, different aspects of blockchain logic in. You know, if you're like, hey, I really want to change how consensus works. You know, how do we come to a consensus on what the, the reality, what the ground truth is? Uh, but I don't want to have to worry about how the networking works. You know, I'm just going to use TCP. Everything will be fine. I'll use, you know, whatever. I can just you know, use, uh, you know, keep this module in and modify the consensus module. Just like with Ruby, you know, excuse me, Ruby on Rails, I say, well, I uh, don't want to modify uh, uh, this particular aspect of it, but I do want to add uh, some, something different here, and I can do it. And I can really go... Uh, as, as low as I want, right? Starting with substrate, modifying things, as long as it eventually generates uh, uh, s some WebAssembly. Robbie, you had a question? Uh, why lag when there's a runtime? Uh, I don't know why they decided on it compared to uh, other ideas, but uh, so so I don't want to speak for, uh, but I, I will I will say why I think they did it. Uh, that once you have WebAssembly and you know, lots of different things, we're not stuck with just, just Rust, not that you know, Rust isn't something good to be stuck with, but anything really that can generate WebAssembly, uh, we'll be able to, to put into here. So there, there are actually other uh, you know, companies that are developing similar frameworks that will allow them to generate their own runtimes in different languages. Um, but as long as we have like that, that, that lowest common denominator of WebAssembly, then we um, are able to, uh, Use a lot of other tools, static analysis tools, and IDEs, and you know different languages, et cetera. You know whatever the new hot language in 2025 comes out and is, uh, is we should still be able to use that and still use the same technology and just sort of plug and play with that new WebAssembly. Yep. So I, I don't I don't know Josh if you know any more details about or is that. Okay. Uh, so as I already mentioned, a substrate is written in Rust. It uses Rust, but you don't really need to know much Rust to get by. Um, so I already mentioned sort of in, in um, uh, answering uh, uh, Robbie's question, uh, substrate right now is the only like really you know, uh, openly available framework for easily generating parachains that are uh, Polkadot compliant that we can use to communicate with other parachains. Uh, but there are others creating new frameworks. This is, you know, it is happening uh, uh, as we speak. People are probably developing. Um, 
And uh, I also want to uh, mention that we can use substrate to make a blockchain and just totally ignore the polka dot parts of it. To say, oh, yeah, I don't care. I want to make my blockchain. Um, and uh, yes, this will allow you to make things that are, uh, uh, you can interact with Polkadot and other blockchains, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. All right. Okay, so how are people doing uh, with compilation? Who's, who's got it done? All right, I see lots of, th all right, who's still working on it? All right, how, how far along is it? Okay, awesome. Uh, so we'll we'll uh, just we'll start, but you can get, let it uh, let it uh, build. Uh, so what we're going to do is from the substrate root directory, uh, run this command. So uh, what are we going to what are we going to do here? So we're going to run the node template, which is basically a very uh, which is what you uh, built with that cargo build needed CD node template. Uh, this is a very uh, simple and a uh, basic uh, a node that we're going to create that has doesn't have a lot of the extra things that we're not going to need. Uh, base path is just where we are going to store our data. You know, temp Alice, if you want to put it in some place different, you know, that, that's fine. Um, dash dash chain equals local. Uh, this is going to uh, use a pre-generated uh, 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 blockchain. So it's going to have a couple of different accounts that are already built in. Um, uh, when we start that are going to have uh, some uh, and some accounts that are allowed to be validators. That is, they can say that like, yes, this block is something valid. Um, dash dash key slash slash Alice, uh, which is just the one person who is a validator, you know, this one account that is going to be a validator who has the special key slash slash Alice. Uh, so we'll call her Alice, which makes sense. That's her name. Um, Dash dash port 3333. This actually, uh, this is the default. So if you don't include this, you know, you're fine. Dash dash validator says what kind of node is it going to be? It's going to be a validator. It's going to be a node which can, in fact, uh, validate, uh, validate blocks that they are correct. And finally, we're just giving it a name, Alice's node. So if you, again, there should be, uh, you should just be able to go to that bit.ly link that links to a gist that should have all of these uh, uh, commands that you can just copy and paste. Are you gonna run this on the yes, yes, sorry, that's what I'm doing right now. So uh, I am just going to, uh, before I do that, just uh, rm-rf, my uh, since I was messing with this before. Temp Alice. All right. And hopefully you'll see something like this. Oh, uh, sorry. So if you look in the, uh, oh, I'll bring this back up on the screen. Uh, but if you go to the, the gist, um, which I have a link to, that's probably gonna be the easiest way. Uh, but do you have, do you have that? Did you, but here's, here's the whole command. Yeah, yes. Um, what's special about that specific commit that you were pointing oh, to? Uh, so what's special about that commit? Uh, so this is this software is not released yet, and so there have been some breaking changes uh, as, as we have gone along. We wanted to make sure that we had a commit that was working and that we have thoroughly tested to make sure that there aren't any issues with. Um, uh, because we have... We have had an instance where I, you know, we're on a branch, the branch is working fine, a new commit comes in. So finally we said, all right, this, we're, we're pinning this commit. Um, but it is a very recent one, it's from this Friday. So don't worry, you're not using some old, uh, old commit. But that's the only thing special about it is that we wanted to make sure like, 
Just in case any breaking changes came in this morning, we didn't want to be surprised. Right. Right. How, how's yours doing? Still, still going. Yeah, it's it's a long bill. Oh, the Bitly link. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's a lot easier than trying to copy all that down. All right, yep. Oh, the Bitly? Yeah. Yeah. You, you should go to this website. Uh, yeah, this is going to be easiest if you can you can just copy and paste. So if you go to that, yeah.
All right, so I think uh, most people are, are either ready for the next step or they're, they're very close. And the, the next step uh, is, well, you saw that you know, we're doing something, right? So, something is happening here. Uh, and uh, we probably want to see uh, a little bit more, uh, hold on one second, in depth, right? All right, so what, what is happening? What are we seeing here? Okay, so uh, we're just saying, hey, this is our, our chain specification. This is who I am. And uh, it's basically waiting, you know, just some information, some startup information. And then it's waiting for, you know, you can see zero peers, which makes sense, right? You know, no one's connected to it. Uh, so it's not really doing anything. It's not, there's not much use for it yet, okay? Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know... Uh, most people I have found don't like just like staring at terminal screens uh, like this. Uh, you know, I, I'm, pro I'm probably the, uh, the outlier uh, in that. <laughs> Most people like this thing called the World Wide Web. Uh, so uh, we actually can sort of uh, use this to see what is happening on our network. Uh, this actually, it's, it's by def So if you go to polkadot.js.org slash apps slash pound slash explorer, uh, again, I have a link to this in the bit.ly link, so you don't have to uh, write it down. Um, and we can actually do some exploring and see what is happening on, uh, on our nodes. So this actually, this is hooked up to what's called the Alexander testnet. This is sort of a, uh, the testnet for Polkadot. Polkadot has not uh, been released yet, but we are running a, a testnet. And uh, this allows us to see, yes, thank you. Um, what is happening on that network, but you're like, I don't care about that network. I want to know about my network. Well, because we built our, you know, you know uh, built our, uh, our blockchain using the substrate framework, one of the things that it gives us is the ability to use this tool to look at our local network. So let's take a look at what blocks are being produced, not on Alexander, but rather on a local node. So if you go to that site, polkadot.js.org, uh, app settings. This should work on any Chromium browser. I think they say that only Chrome, but uh, I, I use Brave and it, it seems to work fine. I've never had any problems. Save and reload. I go back to explore and boom! There's my beautiful blockchain. All right. Uh, now, not much is happening on this blockchain. It's just kind of sitting there, right? Because we're not generating any blocks. We're not doing anything yet. We're just a single node. Just, you know, uh, we're just compiled and waiting for someone to talk to us. Uh, so let's bring someone into, uh, let's bring someone into the world and have them start talking. So let's get another node running. Right. Uh, so as I said, there's really uh, doo -doo -doo. not much to see here. It should look like this. Um, so with, with the particular default consensus algorithm that we're using, uh, you need at least two 
uh, two machines, uh, two nodes interacting before we can actually uh, make more blocks. But we do have what's called a genesis block, which is like the special first block in the blockchain. Um, and you can, so if you remember my drawing, or my, my uh, drawing of how blockchain works, where we always say a, a previous hash, that is what is the hash, that is, you know, I wanna feed all the data in the previous block through a hash function and get a number. Well, at my zeroth block, my very first block, there is nothing before that. So we can see here, I've got this special hash of, and you should see this on your, if you go to polkadotjs.org, of just all zeros. All right, so in order to generate some more blocks, you know, which is probably what we want, we want a blockchain, not just a block, right? Uh, what we can do is run another node. So we're going to run another node as Bob, who is also allowed to be a validator by you know, that default uh, Genesis block uh, that we have with chain local. So if you, if you open up another uh, terminal tab and start another node template running, so you notice we'll have base path temp Bob instead of temp Alice, but we'll still use the same blockchain, chain equals local. The key is slash slash Bob, easy to remember. Um, uh, we'll give it port 3334. Okay, so just because 3333 is already in use. We'll also be a validator. The name will be Bob's node instead of Alice's node. And here's where it gets a, li a little, not, not that tricky, but a little bit tricky. Uh, so boot nodes. We need to say, all right, who am I going to connect to? Who are the, who is the, the node, where is the node that I'm going to try to get my data from and start up what we call peering with and, and joining the network? So, for this, we're gonna have dash dash boot nodes, where only boot node we have right now is Alice. So IP4, Alice's IP address, which uh, for all of you can be 127.0.0.1, the loopback address, uh, using TCP. Alice's port is 30333 slash P2P. Uh, so if, if you look, you actually uh, can also put in uh, Alice's node ID uh, but this actually will, uh, at the end of this, but uh, there's only one, uh, so if you look at some of the, the directions, it'll talk about getting the node ID, but as long as there's only one, um, uh, one node running at this address, then it'll just connect to it. You don't need that node ID. So uh, if you just use this command, uh, we, should, we should be able to get a, a second block, excuse me, a second node running and start generating blocks, which is what we're all here to do. All right, so I'm letting, you know, we can see Alice, she's running here. Oops. You can see it found an external node address, and I have found one peer. Now you can see some more fun stuff is happening. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, which I don't know of any other like major blockchain. Or is that 
not very, no, yeah, it's not very uh, fancy. It's just all the validators rotate in a circle, producing the next block. Okay. Yeah. Babe is the sort of the blind assignment one where it's pseudo randomly chosen. That's the cool one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if, if anyone is not doing this, if you check out your polkadotjs.org, you should be blocks, you should see blocks being produced about once every 10 seconds or so. What? Well, it, it's priceless. Billions every second. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that is 
All right, so congratulations. I think everybody is produced, pretty much everyone's producing blocks, right? Anyone still? Uh, all right, awesome. All right, so congratulations. We have now uh, met uh, the goal for tonight, right? We have all built a blockchain using Substrate. Yeah, woo! But yeah, wow, thank you. Wow, I feel like a rock star. Uh, no, why, yeah, why, why, when I was a professor, no one ever did that. <laughs> Uh, so now let's make it even more. Let's make it a little bit more fun, right? We've met the the minimum the minimum viable product here. Okay. Um, so let's let's uh, let's get let's get a little bit uh, more more in depth. We're seeing the blocks being produced, um, but we've got a little bit of a problem here, right? Uh, anyone can pretend to be Alice and Bob. We've got these keys that everyone knows, right? Slash slash Alice and slash slash Bob. Very simple keys, not really well protected. Okay. Uh, so the next step, what we're going to do is actually use you know, the, the, the cryptographic part of a blockchain. We're going to develop our own uh, keys, generate our own keys uh, uh, that are going to allow us, excuse me, allow us to use public key cryptography, uh, give ourselves an address, give us an account uh, on, the, on the system, uh, accounts on the system, and allow us to digitally sign our data so that, you know, I can't just say that, oh, right, those are, you know, my 500 bill coins over there, and, or, you know, and then someone else says, no, no, those are my 500. Uh, we'll very easily be able to make our own accounts, um, again, using public key cryptography. So, uh, oh, did, did that get merged in, Joshi, that, that, that PR for using... No. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, I apologize. This this was the the, the, the fancy GUI based way of doing it, but you know we're all hardcore hackers here. Uh, so we'll go back to the you know you all go, were using the command line, so we'll go back to the command line for a while, um, and uh, generate a key. I so, even reviewed it today, and it still didn't merge it. Ah, jeez. Europeans, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, I'm going to just start up a new, uh, I'll leave those running uh, for a moment. Uh, so if you remember, there was the one command to install subkey. Uh, so subkey uh, is going to generate, a, I assume it stands for generate substrate key. Right? We're going to do subkey dash E generate. So what this dash E does, so this is, uh, we could do this on the, um, using the GUI. There is a, there is a bug about, uh, the, the, about checksums. If you're really interested, I'm happy to, to share the PR. <laughs> um, but uh, this is what it's doing behind, behind the scenes. So we're just going to do it from the command line. Uh, that dash E, in case you're wondering, is just going to gener generate uh, a crypt, uh, excuse me, a public and private key using the Edwards curve. Uh, if you're familiar with elliptical curve cryptography, uh, I'm not saying that I'm very familiar with it, uh, but there are different curves that can be used. And for this, we're going to need this particular uh, kind of, of key. So subkey dash E generate, and you will see something like this. Uh, so if you were actually storing real money or your real data on this, you would not want anyone to see uh, uh, the, the top two elements. Right, yeah, okay, yeah, Jake, thank you. Uh, I'm not storing anything in there. If you take a picture, it's, uh, it's not going to help you out much. Uh, you can steal some testnet uh, stuff from me. Uh, but what is this? Well, you've got a seed, which you can think of as like a private key. Okay, uh, so if you're familiar with public, and if you're not familiar with public, uh, public key cryptography, you have two basically very large numbers, okay? One of which you can use to encrypt your data, and if someone wants to send you uh, data, they can use your public key. So you never want to uh, use your private key. This is going to allow you to uh, prove that it was you, basically. So thus you can like, you know, claim your coins uh, or your data. Uh, this is how people can send uh, uh, money or data or whatever to you. Um, but this is how you unlock it. So I like to think of it, if anyone here has like, been to the post office and there's like you know, PO boxes, right? And anyone can give you mail. Right? That, that's like your public key, your address. But only you can unlock it. 
right? So I can, you know, if I go to the post office, I can say, hey, I want to give this guy 50 bucks and just put 50 bucks in their post office uh, box. That'll work fine. Um, but only that person can unlock it. And it's very similar with your private key versus your address, okay? Uh, so generally, you would not, after running this, you would never, ever, ever, ever want to show anyone this number, okay? Um, and if you're wondering what that phrase is, that's really just uh, this, this number in a, uh, an easier to remember format. Okay, uh, so I don't know about you, it's easier for me to remember or write down, deliver lemon question sentence step dot 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 as opposed to this very lar large hexadecimal number. All right, so the two uh, values we're really going to need are seed and address. Okay, so you may wanna just copy and paste this into whatever text editor you have. Uh, uh, I'm not going to take sides on which one is the best, but it is Emacs. Uh, but you know, just, just copy and paste that and leave it to the side for a second, and that will be your private key. Wow, room got quiet after the, after, uh... <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, so... All right, so like I said, there, there, there are two ways uh, to do this. There, there is a bug in, the, in the, uh, the nice, easy, gooey way of doing it. Um, but was everyone here able to generate a key? Anyone having problems with that? You worry? Okay, good. Anyone having problems generating a key? If not, I can generate a key and give you one. Which, again, don't have anyone do that for you if real money is at stake, by the way. All right. All right, so we all, we all have keys. We got that set aside. All right, excellent. So previously, what we did when we first built this blockchain, we just said, all right, whatever the default stuff, you know, default settings are, that's what we're going to use. But uh, what if we want to modify it? What if we want to have, like, certain special things that um, – we want uh, you know, to have our blockchain uh, do. So the easiest way to do that, and there are ways to go more in depth, is to modify the chain spec or chain specification. So this is just you know, a specification of, all right, here is how the blockchain operates. Um, what we're gonna do is you run this command. Again, if you look at the bit.ly link, you can just take uh, you know, copy and paste this out. We're gonna take that local chain, that default local chain that's built in, and we're going to pipe it out uh, to uh, custom spec.json. All right. So we're going to take that data. Oh, you may want to stop your uh, blocks uh, being produced unless you just like your computer. We're going to, uh, you know, if, if, if you want your computer, if it, like, your lap's a little cold and you want your computer to run for a while, you can leave it. But uh, you probably just want to stop these for now. So uh, I'm going to modify my uh, chain spec. Let me go over. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to first export my uh, chain spec. Should only take a second. Um, so I took like, you know, the local chain and sent it out into custom spec.json. So this is going to be, uh, let me uh, embiggen that a bit. Is that legible, people in the back? Yeah, I'll, I'll embiggen it a bit more. So I saw people shaking their heads, Robbie. No, it's why isn't it getting any bigger? Yeah. Is that really? No, sorry. Uh, uh, you, oh yeah. I don't know why it's not getting any bigger though. It should. There we go. Okay. All right. So uh, we can see here. A um, uh, so if you're if you're not familiar with JSON, it's basically just a key value. Hopefully, most people nowadays are familiar with JSON. It's just a bunch of keys and what values they are. All right. So I've got a lot of uh, default stuff. Here's what's going to show in the um, the Genesis block. Um, so the one thing we're going to modify here. Uh, whoops. Why didn't this this should have reloaded? Sorry. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to show you two, a couple of things that are in this, this JSON, this chain spec. Uh, first is authorities. 
Uh, so with our initial local chain, our default local chain, there are two authorities, Alice and Bob. They are the only ones who can decide what blocks are going to be produced. Again, there are all sorts of other uh, consensus algorithms uh, saying that these are the only two people who can use this. Uh, that's probably not you know, optimal in most cases. Um, so, uh, but uh, you know, for our, our purposes, uh, you know, for, for a blockchain, we can see say, all right, here's a list of people that I trust. And so here's who's going to be allowed uh, to produce blocks. Again, lots more complicated ways of doing it. Um, this code section, this is very important. So hopefully everyone just memorize this real quick. No, not really. Uh, not really. This is just a, this is the big WebAssembly blob defining our state transition. This, this is what's called the runtime, the substrate runtime. Uh, so this just defines what our state transition is. That all right, you have to sign before you can move tokens. You have to sign it with your uh, you know, with, with, with your key, and you can't move more tokens than you have access to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of that stuff, you know, again, this is just a hexadecimal representation of all that code. And you can see it's actually, you know, this is very big, right? But once again, Emacs is handling it. All right, let's go all the way to the end. You can see a couple of other uh, 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 bits and pieces of uh, uh, data that we want. Uh, you know, what is you know, how how much is like the minimum that people are allowed to have? Here are some accounts that are going to have some default balances uh, in them, so I can modify them. Um, you know, do, you can do whatever you want uh, with them to set what's the, called the genesis block, right? The first block. Okay. Uh, so really, uh, all I'm interested in. Here is, remember I said that having two people producing blocks, that's probably a suboptimal way of making a blockchain. Uh, so we're just going to say everyone trusts me and have one person that we can trust, which is even better, right? That's decentralizing it even more. Uh, so I'm going to take my key, uh, which again, you should not generally be seeing. Uh, uh, you can see my addresses, but you shouldn't be seeing my keys. So I'm going to take my address. And so for this chain that I'm going to produce, okay, and then uh, we'll have everyone else connect to my chain. I'm the one validator, and we'll see if we can get everyone connected. Uh, to... Already two validators block. No, I think if you just have one, it'll, it'll, oh, I will okay. just generate. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, wor it worked for me. If, if not, then uh, yeah, this was, this was working. So uh, if, if, if it doesn't start producing blocks, then I'll just I'll, I'll spin up another one real quick. Okay, but you get to be involved in like as we figure this out. All right, so after this, I need to convert. This is sort of a human readable JSON. Uh, I'm going to convert it. Again, if you look at the, uh, the, the uh, convert readable chain spec to raw chain spec. All right. So this is making this custom spec raw. Again, it's not it's not very exciting. If I mean, if you really want to look at it, you can. Uh, Looks very, very similar uh, to this, just a little bit less readable. Some of the uh, keys are, are listed as their hex formats instead of, instead of in, in human readable form, but it's basically the same thing. All right, so now uh, let's uh, start, make sure that I can, uh, I'm gonna make some minor changes here. Well, first I'm gonna get rid of my old uh, blockchain, sorry. Okay. All right, uh, just, all right. Actually, yeah, well, I'll, I'll copy and paste from Bitly just so we can all stay on the same. Uh... Okay, um, so you'll notice instead of chain equals local, I have chain space custom spec raw dot JSON. Uh, so note that it is slightly different. It's not equals, it is a space, and then this, this custom specification that I've just made in JSON. Uh, with the key, so remember, so this blockchain says the only person that can be a validator is that um, whoever has that address, right? That, that address that I just pasted and generated. So the, um, I need to know in order to say that I am the person behind that address, I need to know the secret key, the seed. So I'm going to paste that here. All right, am I missing anything? Got the chain, I got the key by default 3333. All right, let's try it. And I think if I only have one authority, it will still produce blocks. If not, I'll just make it a second one real quick. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, the, the, I, I actually, I, I discovered this accidentally because I forgot to spin another one up. And then I was like, hey, you know, that's, uh, it works. So as long as you just have one authority set, it, it'll just generate. So, uh, all right, so now I've got this blockchain running that I've now, you know, I've made a, a, I made a very slight change to the specification. Like, all right, I generated a key. I'm the only one that can now be trusted to, to generate blocks. Um, so again, kind of a, you know, a, a silly idea for a blockchain, right? It build chain, uh, just trust whatever Bill says. But we did make a modification to it and ran it. And again, we haven't touched any code yet. Right? We've built, but we haven't really had to modify any code. And we've been able to do some, uh, you know, like not just make a blockchain, but also modify it somewhat. Okay? Uh, all right, so now uh, let's, uh, let's try getting people to connect to me. So let's have a class chain. Uh, right? Remember that, that, wasn't that, that song in the 70s? You know, people over the world join hands, start a class chain. Class chain. No? Yeah, thank you. A couple, a couple old people in here get that song. All right, so uh, you should do the the uh, the, the same same thing. Is uh, take out that custom spec .json using that uh, command in the bitly. All right, so go up a little bit. Uh, so target debug no template build spec. Uh, I will add my address that you can copy and paste into. Uh, I'll put it into the gist. I'll just put it at the top, why not? Oh, actually, no, I'll, I'll put it. Uh, uh, Bill's uh, address is, I kept it over here. Doo -doo -doo. Update public. Okay. Um, so again, so go into, uh, so after you run that command uh, to generate the custom spec.json, go down, it should be line 17, uh, consensus, authorities, and then there should be by default two addresses listed. These are Alice's and Bob's, but Alice and, and, Bo Alice and Bob aren't here right now, uh, so let's get rid of them and just replace it with in quotes 5CR. I can't believe it generated a key in five crap. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I, the, the ra randomness is out to get me today, apparently. After you've modified that, again, using your favorite text editor, uh, run the second command that converts it into raw. So again, this is uh, on uh, the bit.ly, so uh, the build spec chain, Wow, that's really small. So this is going to take this and output it to custom spec raw.json. All right, and once you've done that, um, run. you're going to run a node and you're going to connect uh, uh, to me. So by default, you're going to go over port 3333, which should be accessible if you are on the uh, Substrate Meetup Wi-Fi network. If you are not on the Substrate Meetup Wi-Fi network, you're going to want to uh, uh, change that. And uh, let me see what my IP is right now. Uh, where is it? Here we go. So I'll uh, update this, my instructor's IP address. And uh, you actually, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, you don't need to add in that instructor's um, node ID. So I just updated the gist. 
Did we say gist or gist? Okay. Did we say gif or jif? All right, so with dash dash key, you're going to enter your seed, dash dash name, just give your, your a node name, whatever your name is. Um, then dash dash boot node space IP4, just say we're using IP, IPv4 instead of IPv6. Uh, instructor's IP address, which is 1010230111, uh, slash TCP, slash 3333, slash P2P. And then hopefully, I'm going to see some peers joining me here. Seventy-eight forty. Ah, uh, seed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for your, for your name, you can be whatever. Uh, no, but I think in the, if you have Rust log debug on, will you see the names of the nodes? I, I think, but I we, we this would be going about four billion lines per second. They don't, they don't have to make it to, to work. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are here. What, what data is allowed to go over the network? Uh, if you want to use naughty words. Uh... Okay, all right. So, yeah, knock yourself out. I'm sorry? So, yeah. People are dialing into your node now. Oh. Or that's what we're, that's the step we're on? Yes. Yeah, cool. Okay, I don't see it. I don't see it. Has anyone done it, but like you're, you're getting problems? I know. I only have here. One second. Maybe. Yeah, so I'm sure I'm gonna try to. Yeah, uh, let me. Um, it'll say what. I swear I had this working without it, but. We all just got it working on our own local systems. Yeah, maybe that's the problem. So. It, uh, maybe I wouldn't think so. Oops, that's. Yeah, maybe it doesn't work when you're. It's, yeah, it's the node identity. Yeah, when you use Aura, they're all relative. That's why that's 
Okay, if you if you reload the gist, uh, try adding this 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 node ID to the end of that. You're still getting not a valid boot node. Can I can I see your your? Yeah, it, it shouldn't matter. Well, let me see the command that you're running. Can you actually can you copy and paste the like email to me? Wait, did you leave a comment? <laughs> yeah. Uh, if config dash a. Oh, I didn't know that. Option click. Oh, wow. Well, I, I know at first I, I, I then I option clicked and then went down to open network references. I didn't notice that. It, <laughs> I didn't notice it just showed it to you there. All right, did you uh, paste it? Okay. All right. Chain custom spec raw key name. Well, yeah, but they can ping, so this is. Oh, Bill, do you have your own personal firewall open on 302? I thought I turned off my. Uh... No, because people have been able to ping me. Yeah, firewall's off, all incoming connections allowed. All right, I'm able to peer locally. Well, that's it's. Oh, that's what. Yeah. Well, this this is this is my validator. Yeah. So this is my validator. I'm saying like, so I can connect with you with your command. You see it like it's. Um, but, yeah. So th this is his, this is his command. So he just so Colin just copy and pasted it to me. But this is saying not a valid boot note address. Yeah, that's I, I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> it's wait a second. Here. 
So this is Bill's Genesis block right here. It starts with six zero three nine. So Wait, what? No, 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 that, that's that's the ninety fourth block. Just go up. Oh, how did you get to? Oh, okay. sorry. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you put one in here. Okay, right. okay, you're right. Whoa. Oh, I don't know where that where that is, Bill. That's okay. Well, okay, so at least. Among ourselves, we can compare, and if we don't have the same Genesis block hash, that's the reason why we wouldn't matter. Yeah, well, so your best number zero is seven niner f seven. So who else has one going to ten? Yeah. 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 Y
Right, so get rid of your, your chain spec raw and put this one in. In fact, I'll click on raw, copy and paste, get rid of mine, save it. Then you should be able to run with the exact same command because it's, um, it's still going to look for custom spec raw.json. There's just different data in that file right now.
Hey, uh, if, if you're experiencing problems, I, I think it's because uh, some people have the old uh, chain lying around. So if you add that dash dash base app slash temp new, it's going to put you know, uh, make the new storage directory and temp new, which should generate a new chain. So if you if you could try that, if you're, if you're not getting it to work, those who has cured with me. Purge chain. Okay, yeah, so th this is the equivalent of purge chains. It's going to write it to a different place. Uh, so yeah, so if you do a new base path. Yeah. Sublime is probably the easiest to get used to and still pretty powerful. Six peers. I guess that's working. All right. That's the problem. It was, it was, it was people weren't purging. I, oh, great. So it was still, yeah. All right. Who hasn't been able to connect yet? I, th I think we've figured out the issue. Everyone's muted. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, yeah. So before before we leave, let's see if we can send some some send some tokens around. Uh, uh, wow. I'm pr I'm pretty happy. We're uh, we're we're, gener we're generating blocks. We we're we're all peered up. We're we're all together. I feel like you know, it's a warm fuzzy in my heart. Um, you know, which is we're all together. That's what blockchain is all about. It's warm fuzzies, right? Um, so let's uh, connect to our local network with tokenjs.org. Uh, so we can see we are producing block. I've got a couple of different accounts here. Uh, and if people want to uh, uh, make uh, comments with your address, I'll send, uh, I can send over some token name tokens uh, that are, that are uh, part of this. You know, they don't have to, they're units. Bill, yeah, Bill, let's call them Billcoins. Actually, that's, uh, we were done, there are a couple of people who have done the Billcoin challenge, right, for, uh, for 1632. Uh, you, you, you took it too early. Uh, so, yeah, whatever. Well, Laboon coin, there we go. That's appropriate. Or Billy coin. Uh, so let's, um, if you go to the gist and post your address, I'll, uh, so who wants to do that? Just, you know, someone post it since I have like a valid address to send some coins to. So you're just saying comments on that? Yeah, yeah, sorry, go, go to the gist. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and at the bottom, you should be able to leave a comment. Uh, how do you know yes, yeah, so if you look at your sub key. Uh, I said to save it. Or just run it again. Run it again, it doesn't really matter. No, it just generates a new one. It just, uh, it's not like writing any that don't exist. They're just like, they're possible addresses in a very, very large um, space. I'm oh, sorry? You want down? Okay, excellent. Then you get like a million bill coins. I said, uh, yeah, a million bill coins is equal to uh, one Stanley nickel. Okay. Uh, some, some people get, the, uh, so uh, not, not the IP address. Uh, your your address that should look like this, like your your uh, account address. Let's just start with five. Okay, uh, Lady Sneaks, <laughs> you get to be first. Um, I'm sorry. Oh shoot. It polka.js doesn't like it because of the checksum. Uh, yeah, sorry, this is the, the pull request. They changed the checksum, but not in one of the branches, but not the GUIs. Um, is, is there a command line way to do this? I don't even know. All right. Oh, ooh. All right, let's let's try it. Yeah, this this is gonna be awesome. 
All right, so sub key. I've never done this with a command line. So it's, uh, okay, so from to amount index. What's what's index? Okay. Um, all right. So from that's is that going to be the seed? We got you got to talk to your uh, buddies at Perry. This is. Uh, <laughs> hey, you're, you're talking to us right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, try, try this sub key help transferring money. Don't worry about. It. Okay. So no deck. Gotcha. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So all right. So okay, excellent. Okay, never mind. Good, good work. Uh. All right. So my secret key. My super secret key is here. No one look. Um, okay, so two is going to be your address. Okay, uh, or 10,000. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and then zero for the nonce. Invalid two URI. Maybe. Uh, can you give me your public key, please? All right, thank you. Uh, hey, that looks good. All right, so let's go back to the UI. Um, where, where, how do I submit a raw transaction? Awesome. Well, can I parent? It's so much easier with the UI. Sorry, under. Yes, transfer. Say the following. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Well. Um. All right. Well, yeah. There's a bug in the UI. I apologize, and I'm not sure how we're uh, going to get that. Um. But yeah. So hopefully, you saw we all were able to connect. Uh, I see lots of uh, uh, peers here. We would be able to send uh, some tokens around. Apologies that that is a bug that is just recent, but should be fixed, right? Like it's, it's fixed, it's not merged. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah. So hopefully you all uh, in, enjoyed this. You saw how easy it was to create a uh, create a blockchain and modify it. Um, uh, as I said, I plan on having a few more uh, of these workshops over the summer, including you know, how can I you know, join the test net, how can I be a validator uh, or, or a collator, uh, and then also creating your own runtime. So getting uh, instead of just working off of like the, the basic modules and different configurations, you know, how can you go in and modify and, and make your own um, uh, you know, uh, rules? So one thing I'm thinking of doing, people may be interested, although if you have other ideas, I'm happy to hear them. Is like making a Bitcoin clone. You know, as you know, Bitcoin operates under the under the hood a little bit differently than the defaults here, uh, and we could uh, make, make a runtime that simulates how Bitcoin works. Uh, so, any questions? It's almost nine o'clock, so uh, give a chance if anyone has any like general questions. I'm happy to take them now. Yeah, so one thing you could do is just like make you know, your own copy of Bitcoin. Uh, another thing you could do is make a runtime that uh, has a state transition function of Bitcoin and actually interface with the Bitcoin network, like generate, generate um, uh, transactions on Bitcoin or, re or read off them. But yeah, that's, in fact, I, I think someone is working on that. Um, I'm always interested to see more, more implementations of Bitcoin from scratch. Yeah. Yeah, and that, 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 yeah, it's definitely something that, that you can do uh, with this. I mean, you know, you know, Bitcoin, you know, there's, there's a lot of work to be done on that, generating one of these bridges that 
imitates basically or acts as a bridge to one of these uh, uh, chains that already exists. It's, it's a non-trivial process, um, but I, I am certain, I, I know that there is a company generating an Ethereum bridge right now. Um, I think there is someone working on a Bitcoin bridge, theoretically possible, uh, and I'm pretty sure that someone is working on one. So in order to interact uh, with, so, so the question was, you know, would it work with things like, like, like a, a generic distributed hash table or something like that? Uh, so you would have to basically, in order to interact with Polkadot, make it act like a parachain, but you can have a bridge uh, to something. As long as you make it act like a blockchain, a distributed hash table, you could, you know, as long as, you know, each, each block would represent like a delta in that, uh, that hash uh, table, then you, you could do something like that. It's not, I don't think it's really what it's made for per se, but I think you could do something like that. So then I was thinking for a workshop about an alternate blockchain that would have like contracted with blockchain. Oh, so the thing was like DAG? Yeah, uh, IOT. Uh, yeah, like IOT uses a DAG, yeah. So these other, these other uh, so you would have to like basically make a social smart collator, something or some way to define that state transition function. So how do things transition? Uh, you basically, add, if it's something that's not a blockchain, there's basically going to be an interpretation level as well, right? To convert it into something that can be access like a blockchain. Um, I mean, if you want to interact with Iota, or something like the DAG base, or, uh, you know, or like Nano, or some of these other systems that use a, a non-blockchain, you know, like some blockchain-esque way of storing data, then yeah, that would be useful. And, and honestly, I don't know anyone. Do you know anyone that's working on anything like that? It's on separate. Yeah. There aren't any of the DAG base systems that have been linked to anything yet. No. It's only like a GitHub goal. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like theoretically possible. As far as I know, no one's working on it. But you know, yeah, Substrate is a relatively you know still new. Um, you know, there's, as you can see, you know, there, there are you know, features being merged in all the time. So, but yeah, that's something that uh, is definitely theoretically possible. Hey guys, we also have uh, every other Monday we have office hours online. So if, if you are into this, feel free to, to join us. Like a good jumping off point is um, charity.org.